two words in this song I want to clarify. And one is, the book of love is the word of God, and the dove is the Holy Spirit. Despite knowing all 
is now finished. His, his physical body is fighting to live. He thirsts. This is from the Gospel of John. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said, I thirst. A bowl full of vinegar stood there, so they put a sponge full of vinegar on Hyas and held it to his mouth. I ask you all at this time, if you would like to close your eyes and put yourself in Christ's position on that cross. You feel the nails tearing into your hands and your feet. Your raw back and legs from scorching earlier in the day rub against the rough wood and splinters piercing already pierced flesh. They match the pain of the two and three inch thorns already on your forehead. Your shoulders are dislocated. You are bruised in every possible place on your body. It hurts to breathe. It hurts to move. It hurts to speak. You glance around and you see nothing but pain and torture. Jeers and vile remarks of the worst kind being thrown at you. Celebration among the people who called for your death. Romans and many Jews, some even who used to listen to you in the synagogues and in the streets. The worst of it is looking down and seeing your mother. The woman who has beautifully lived for life out of total love and devotion to you. You see her utterly broken in her sorrow, and yet she understands in her heart that you must suffer. And this gives her strength to stand aside and humbly accept a sword piercing her own heart. After catching her eyes for only a few seconds, you see her close her eyes. You lean your own head back and face the sky. The sun beating down with heat that only adds to your misery. Sweat from your forehead mixed with blood and falling into your eyes. You close those stinging eyes and attempt to swallow, but your throat is now like sandpaper, and the only adds to more of the pain you already have. With your eyes closed, you whisper barely, audibly, I thirst. At this time, a sponge approaches Christ's mouth and he drinks, thus fulfilling the Passover meal as well as foretelling the scripture. But this is not the only thirst that Christ meant on this cross. As Jesus closes his eyes, he sees only one thing. You. Us. Moreover, he sees you at the point in your life when you were at your lowest he sees you yelling profanities at a parent or even a friend. He sees you doing things on a weekend with your friends that you utterly are ashamed of. He sees you locked away in the privacy of your own room. He sees you crying in complete and utter hopelessness. He sees the hatred and the madness, the pain and suffering, the agony and the sorrow. And even while seeing this, our most fragile and broken state, he smiles. The pain does not matter anymore. It has no power over him. He, her, he thirsts is for your salvation. His thirst is for your joy. His thirst is for you to feel mercy and to feel compassion. His thirst is for you to love him. And even though he knows every reason we give as to why we don't deserve this love, he loves us anyway. He hears people crying to him to save himself, to let himself down off the cross, if he truly was the Son of God, but why would he do that? But he has no desire to get off that cross. You see, it isn't the nails that fasten him to that cross. It's not the spikes that keep him on that piece of wood. No, it's his love for you, for us, that keeps him clinging to the cross with all his might and power and love and thirst.